after the for where the goes, I will go. And where the lodges, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people, and thy God, my God. About this time, Ruth have been acquainted with Naomi. Not only with Naomi, but with Naomi's God. Amen. And these words have been repeated at many weddings. Thy people shall be my people, amen. And thy God, my God. Entreat me not to leave thee. What powerful words. Now, a friend of mine, the story continues that when Naomi and Ruth reached Bethlehem, Ruth said, and Naomi said to Ruth, I have a kinsman. The care mean, means kinsman redeemer. I have a kinsman, somebody that is next to kin. His name is Boaz. And you can go and glean in his field. Now the gleaning usually is like this. After you have harvested the crops, it was a part of the law in Israel that you should leave some of the grain, some of the produce back in the field so that the poor, the underprivileged, can go into the field and they can get something to sustain themselves. So Naomi said to Ruth, go in the field of Boaz. Maybe you will find favor in his sight. Now, now, now the, the story of, of Ruth and Boaz is not so much of a love story as it is a providential story one of providence. Because, you see, Naomi could not marry again. She was old. She passed the age of childbearing. And she said to Ruth, maybe you might find favor in the eyes of Boaz. He was a next to kin. Now the Lord demands, that the next of kin should marry because Elimelech was Boaz's brother. And the Lord demands that the, if the brother died, then he should take his wife to be his wife. But because Naomi passed the age of childbearing, he could marry Ruth. So Naomi said, maybe you will find favor in the eyes of Boaz. Now Boaz found favor in her eyes. But that was not the real problem. The real problem is that he was not the closest of kin. Boaz said to Ruth, there is another who is closer than that. And according to the law, I cannot marry you, even though I want to marry you, I want to purchase back the property that was given when you entered this land. You did not purchase it, but it was given and it shall belong in the chronicles of Israel, that your name should not be blotted out. Amen? Amen. And as much as I want to do that, I am not the closest to kin. There is another. He need to have First say in the situation, amen. So they call the Supreme Court together, the High Court, that's the elders in Israel, and they presented the matter. But the, the other fellow have decided, well, I'm going to do it. But when he heard that he had to marry Ruth, and he looked at his that his savings that he had, his bank account and his little treasure that he had put aside. He said, I don't want to share my, uh, my earnings, my savings. I will not marry Ruth. I will not purchase the land. 
I will not treasure the name to be the courageous of Israel. And Boaz decided if he should deny, immediately Boaz stepped up and said, I will marry Ruth. I will purchase the land. I will buy back. I will redeem that which was gotten. Amen? And I will return it back to your inheritance. Boaz got married to Ruth. They begat Obed. Obed begat Jesse. Jesse begat David. And so on and so on. And when blind Bartimaeus was, he heard that Jesus was passing by. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I want us to know, friend of mine, when God decided to make this plan, Satan was already going around the universe, spreading lies about God. And the God had decided that they're going to make man. But they already had another situation to contend with. They said, suppose we make man in our image and in our likeness, and Satan tempts them to fall. How are we going to manage? What are we going to do to purchase, to buy back, to redeem? But one amongst the God had said, I will. I will redeem. But God cannot, in his divinity, could not redeem man in his divinity. Yes. Now let me paint a little picture. When Moses made a request, and he said to God, show me your face. God said to Moses, I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock, and I'm going to pass by, but don't peep. You see, if you peep, you're going to be destroyed. After I pass by, then you look out from the cleft of the rock, then you can take a peep. What Moses saw was the afterglow. If you go out there at midday, and you look up at the sun, it can cause damage to your eyes, you can possibly go blind. But if, if the sun descends on the western horizon, and then you look at the sky, and you see a little purple and green and gold, you actually see the afterglow of the sun. That's what Moses saw, the afterglow. He could not stand the presence of a holy God he would have been destroyed. So God, even though the God had decided that Jesus would come and be the kinsman redeemer, he could not come in his divinity. Imagine with me a barrel full of bones. And Jesus had to die in that barrel to save one world at the bottom of the barrel. That's what Jesus had to do in order to become a kinsman redeemer to save you and I. You see, because God cannot bleed. Because God is a spirit. Jesus had to become flesh and blood like you and I. He had to become tired and thirsty and hungry and sweaty. He had to become like one of us. In order to redeem us, the Bible says he became acquainted with that presupposes that he was not familiar with hunger or thirst or being tired or being sweaty or tired. Friend of mine, he became acquainted with. He took part of our nature. Amen. He became like you and I. He became the kinsman redeemer. One Next to Canaan, by the way, a friend of mine, let me say this. Not only did he become a kinsman redeemer, but he became closer than father or mother or brother or sister yes. or wife. That's how close he came. The spirit of prophecy tells us that the 
salvific work of Christ in his redemption. It brings us closer to God than if we had never sinned. Closer than, than when Adam and Eve was created. That's the role of the kinsman redeemer. To redeem means to buy back. It means to purchase. It means to get back that which was gotten by fraud and deception. And by the way, there was no other way for you and I to be saved. There was absolutely no other way. When God looks at his closet, there was only one option, and that was Christ. There is no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Christ is the only way, the only truth, and the only life. Apart from Jesus, friend of mine, there is no other way. We have one decision in this life. We don't make a decision to be lost because we are born lost. We are born separated from God. We are born in the pit. You don't make a decision to be in the pit. We are already in the pit. There is one decision and that is the kinsman redeemer. If we fail to choose Christ, we remain in our lostness. We don't choose to be lost. We are born lost and separated from God. We have one way, one truth, and one life, and that is Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. God loves us, friend of mine. He paid the ultimate price in saving our sorry souls. The ultimate price. And in Christ, we are important. In Christ, we are valuable. In Christ, we are special. In Christ we are meaning because of Jesus. And because he lived, you and I can live also. Amen. Amen. We, are de we are redeemed, as Peter says in 1 Peter chapter 18, not with silver or gold. Peter, who denied his Lord, the denier, when he saw that Jesus was being spit upon and, and been hit, and spikes were driven in his hands and feet and a crown of thorns, on his brow. The spirit of prophecy tells us that from the judgment hall, Peter ran back to Gethsemane. He ran back to Gethsemane where the Lord had asked them to pray and they were asleep. He ran back to the place in the night and he fell prostrate on the ground and the blood was still fresh on the grass. The blood that Jesus shed, great drops of blood, the blood was still fresh he fell prostrate on his face and he repented. So when he got to writing in verse 19, 1 Peter, he did not say we are redeemed by the blood, but with the precious blood of Christ. Amen. The blood is precious, friend of mine. The blood of the kinsman redeemer is precious. We are not redeemed with corruptible things, a silver or gold of tradition. We are redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. You are not a friend of mine. You got royal blood running through your veins. And Jesus' blood is the right type for every single one of us. Amen. 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 I've been asked to, to donate to my brother some bone marrow. And the tentative date is December, December the 21st. And they said uh, they're going to reject me with, with five sets of um, injection to create more bone marrow that will, that will be in my blood so they can uh, do the transfusion. I might be the right type for my brother, but the blood of Jesus is the right type. For every single one of us, for, to every nation, kindred, tongue and people, for every time period, the blood of Jesus has already built into it the antibodies to fight the infection of sin. Amen. There's power in the blood of Jesus, friend of man. And the hymn writer said that there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunged beneath that flood lose all. They're getting saved. With the blood of Jesus, 
with the blood of a kinsman redeemer, we can live about sin, amen? We can live a life that is pleasing in His sight. God loves us, what He said. Amen. And one of these days, friend of mine, I want you to know that Jesus is coming again. Amen. You and I may not know everything. We cannot explain everything. You never read in the scriptures where Mary and Joseph tried to explain the virgin boat. The, the medical world tells us if you try to explain it, you're going to lose your mind. If you don't believe it, I'm saying to you, you're going to lose your soul. It says, by faith, how can a virgin be born again? It's the mystery of godliness. It's the mystery of the incarnation. But well, one of these days, one of mine, the sweet by and by, all things will be made plain. Amen? Amen. God loves us. Amen. I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Amen? Amen. Amen. One of these days, then, going to be no more sickness, and no more pain, and no more sorrow, and no more crying, no more eyeglasses, no more wrinkles in our faces, and no more false teeth, no more gray hair, no more arthritis, no more AIDS, no more cancer, no more hospitals, no more prison. No more death. Somebody got to say amen. amen. It's going to be all right one of these days. One of these days, the trumpet is going to sound. Amen. amen. And the angels are going to shout, Jesus is coming again. Oh, what a day of rejoicing that's going to be. I want to be in that number. I want to sit at the welcome table. I want to eat from the tree of life. Amen. amen. Chachaski is dead. Buddha is dead. Gandhi is dead. Aristotle, Plato, Socrates, they are dead. The king of reggae is dead. The king of rock and roll is dead. The king of soul is dead. The king of pop is dead. But, you see the word but is a conjunctive injunction. The word but changes that which has gone before from that which is to come. But the king of kings, the king's my redeemer is alive. Amen. The good news is we get people in high places. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about the white ones. We got a kinsman redeemer in high places. So we can face tomorrow, amen? amen? With assurance, with conviction that God is with us, amen? amen. And one of these days, friend of mine, we're going to look back and say, how did we make it? It's only because of the kinsman redeemer. We can arrive safely on the other side, amen? amen. There's somebody here this morning, you want to make that decision, be faithful. Put your hands in the hands of that Galilean man who walked the dusty roads and the rocky places of palace and everywhere he went he was doing good. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the lame lived for joy, the demoniac was cleansed, the leper was cleansed, the demoniac was restored to his right mind. Even the dead was raised to life. And he's the same yesterday. Today and forevermore, amen. amen. If you want to keep your hands in the hands of Jesus, remember, decisions are never pre-planned. The outcome, however, is already waiting on whatever decision we make. Every single day, His grace is afresh every morning, amen. amen. Every day we got to decide to be faithful to God, amen. If this is your decision, friend of mine, you want to show more dependence on him. Amen. Amen. He should be priority. First place, first preference. Number one in our lives. Amen. Amen. And he that has the son, he that has the kinsman redeemer, has life. Amen. He that does not have the son, does not have life. If this is your decision, friend of mine, I invite you to stand with me as we close this meeting. I'll close with him in number 337. I want to remind us that some of us don't even look redeemed. We need to start looking redeemed, amen? amen. Because we are being redeemed by the precious blood of Christ.